Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jennifer C. at HomeLifeCultureLink.com Nino Saimeka at MortgageGodfather.ca and Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this, this is, is The Sit Down with, with Scott, Scott Dion, Dion Brown. Brown. Oh, what a beautiful morning. morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. day. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Hello, welcome to you all tuning in from uh, all over the world, it looks like. We got lots of people in the chat. Hello, welcome to episode 89 of... The sit down with Scott Dion Brown, and indeed, it is a beautiful morning here in the uh, in the city of Toronto. And I am your host, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Dion Brown, and I'm joined, as always, by the greatest co-host in the galaxy, the one, the only. Regina Lena, happy Sunday, everyone. Good morning or magandang gabi to all of you in the Philippines. It looks like we have Philippines in the group chat spot. Uh, yeah, we do. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of Tagalog in there, and uh, yeah. and English as well. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello, well, hello. Well, welcome all of you to the show. Um, Regine, you'll notice that this is the first episode. I think. Yeah, Ever in is. the quarantine time where I'm not wearing my sit-down t-shirt. I was actually wondering where your shirt was. Did you forget to do laundry? Uh, no, I remembered to do laundry. Just and not I wipes. forgot <laughs> to put... No, no, no. I, I did that part. I forgot to put it in the dryer. Well, that's unfortunate that... Yeah. So my sit-down T-shirt is wet. Well, so it's it's that situation where you put it in the dryer. No, sorry, you put it in the washer and then you leave it overnight, so the clothes oh. don't really smell good anymore. So I, I kind of have to wash them again. Yeah, you don't want a stinky sit-down shirt. Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, so anyway, here I am. I wore I wore this instead. And um, good morning to you all, guys. We've got a wonderful episode today. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm. I'm tempted to be like, sorry, guys, but I know you guys are here for our special guest, unfortunately. Uh, Who's Christina? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who are you guys talking about in the chat? Who There's, is uh... Christina? Yeah. Everyone's I don't know like, where Christina, you guys got this Christina. idea. Christina. My name's not Christina. <laughs> are yeah, you I know. Christina? Mine neither. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Regine, I think maybe, maybe, maybe we should um, introduce our guest. What do you think, Regine? I think it's only fair, but her name's not Christina, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now, <laughs> I'm, now I'm confused. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please, our next guest. Um, she well, at this point, she doesn't really need the, uh, too much of a, an introduction. I th- I, I think don't a think few so. people in the chat might might know who she is. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the sit down with Scotty on Brown, the one and only. Christina Tonteri Young. Hello. Happy Sunday. Hello. Welcome hey. to the sit down. Thank you. So, uh, how are you? First of all, actually, I, I wanted to comment on your um, your amazing um, uh, headphones and microphone setup, just because uh, I think you're the first guest we've had who um, has like you know, yeah, you're setup. like ready to go with all the stuff. It looks cool. Y- yeah, I did. I did another podcast last week, and I was like, "Thank goodness I had this," because like, just even doing zooms over like the computer audio, I'm just like, mm, "No, I can't. I can't do it anymore. It's too. It's too grainy." Um, but yeah, and also because I'm not at home right now, so I thought it would be good to have something that I can possibly work with in case in case something happens and I need to actually work. Good God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, yeah. It looks it looks great. It sounds great, and. Um... Welcome to the show. So, how are you doing? How have you been? Uh, how have you been holding up during this uh, crazy time we're going through? 
I'm I'm doing great actually. I'm I'm fine. Like there's nothing to complain about. Um, I so I was working on a project before cor- all of this coronavirus kind of blew up. I was actually working with Scott. Um, oh, uh, yeah, very briefly, but yes. Um, and then I I went back to my parents' house. I was I was staying with my parents in New York, um, in Queens. So that was that was nice. It was like by the beach, so it kind of felt like an unglorified beach holiday. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been just a lot of distracting myself and a lot of reading books and revisiting things because you know, at some point you reach a limit of like how much you can discover when you're stuck in your house. Mm-hmm. Um, and even with the internet, it's like sometimes you just hit this like glass roof where you're just like, I can't. You go on YouTube and you search for a video and you've watched everything that comes up. Exactly. on that search and you're like yeah this is bad <laughs> it's bad <laughs> so yeah that's that's basically it just been uh you know what i discovered on youtube recently um because of that exact same thing is uh bard core have you heard of bard core bard what is core? that so bard core <laughs> is basically it's this i think it's a fairly recent thing but there's like a lot it, Basically, there's a few channels that do it where they take modern songs. So they'll take like Shakira's Hips Don't Lie oh! or like, yeah, and they do like, yeah, they do like medieval versions of it. Do you know what I'm talking okay, about? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. So, Continue. <laughs> well, no. Well, so no, they, I, like, I just, they, like, they like, yeah, go, go. Yeah. They, they, they just, um, they basically transpose it to like medieval instruments or like stuff like that and make it sound a little bit like you know gregorian chants um yeah. <laughs> so it's it's yeah it's a very different way of looking at some pop music it's really cool interesting yeah they yeah they're like playing like you know those like weird shaped guitars which i'm sure they're not called weird shaped guitars actually and they've got like those flutes <laughs> like doo, doo. so and it's so um it's so soothing it, it's it's kind it's almost like elevator music except better you know and i really do imagine like i imagine if they were playing that in those days it, you know it'd, it'd be a pretty good party yeah mm-hmm. it's pretty funny yeah no we, so, we um, could do some medieval dancing to those stuff absolutely there you go. yeah so yeah that's what i've dis- have you so you said so you've pretty much you know you're passing the time have you did you fall down any youtube rabbit holes that's something new to, you discovered i know you said you you pretty much watched every video on youtube at this point is there anything that you're we like oh what how, how did i find myself watching this what am I, <laughs> the, 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 what am the I pimple the right pimple now? popping oh. oh i was like i was yeah. it was like 3 a.m and i was like how i started off watching like surfing um in southern <laughs> california and now i'm like looking at watching like, pimples <laughs> yeah or like cyst like drainage and i'm like hmm Maybe it's time I mean, to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, they are satisfying to watch, but also not something to watch oh, at three in the morning. <laughs> no, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like watching a horror movie just before going to bed. It's just <laughs> widely known not to be a good idea. <laughs> How are your dreams that night? <laughs> God, I don't think I don't remember. I think they they were probably non-existent. Oh, I probably just like blacked out. I was like, that's too much <laughs> overload. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or yeah. right, at least it hasn't seeped into your dreams yet. My, you know, my, my brother is into the, the some of those pimple popping ones. Have Have you seen the uh, There's a There's a like a toy that you can buy, like a pimple popping toy. Have you guys seen that? What? No. Yeah. That sounds you know, repulsive. It's like, it does. So it's like all it is. It, it's basically like this little square, of like, I guess flesh colored like rubber basically, and it's got these tiny little holes in it. And you and it comes with a syringe, and you fill the syringe with this like white stuff that and, comes and with you it. Press yeah, it. Ex- exa- exactly, and then you just press it and squeeze it all out. Yeah. Oh. Um. That. It's the. Yeah. It's the hottest new toy that all the kids are playing with. I think. Oh Anyways. dear, that is. That makes me worried about the next generation of kids. <laughs> yeah, like last year it was poop, so this year it's pimples. Right, I'm definitely not with the times. I haven't got to the poop stage yet, so. <laughs> That's there's, really a lot, there's, a, there's a lot of toys for kids and games that are poop related. It's interesting. 
it's 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 to uh, familiarize them with all of the workings of their body. So exactly, it's taboo, which is good. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun and it's educational. It's, exactly, uh, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, um, I love well, the comments. Yeah. People are like, it's the middle of the night and we're talking about pimple popping. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff we knew. This is what you guys wanted to hear about. We are listening to you guys. Um, <laughs> exactly. So uh, I think we we'll probably just uh, we'll stick to pimple talk for the next hour or so, and yeah. uh, and that'll be good. Great. Yeah. Who wants to hear um, about the show? Like, exactly. When you can talk yeah. about pimples. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Wait. What show? What? A show? Wait. There's a, a show, show called um, Doctor. There's a show called Doctor Pimple Popper. <laughs> There is. That's oh. exactly the show I meant. Right? I knew it. I had a feeling. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. It's not like anybody's here to hear about Warrior Nun or anything. What's yeah. Warrior Nun? Okay. <laughs> yeah, what indeed. Okay, fine, fine, fine. All right, enough enough Dr. Pimple Popper talk. Although, great, great, great show, I'm sure. Great, um, great. So a few of the people here, maybe only Just a, a few. few. Um, uh, are would probably like to hear you talk a little bit about um, this show that's uh, sort of taking the Netflix world by storm, um, Warrior Nun. So uh, we'll start pretty general with it, but uh, you know, tell us a bit about your experience with the show. How 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 has it been, or how, what was it like being on that show? Whirlwind, really, <laughs> like. The experience of making it does kind of mirror the experience that I think people are having now that they're watching it, <laughs> interestingly, um, where it's like you watch the trailer or you like you read the you read the title and you read the little blurb and it's mm -hmm. kind of like, OK, it's really out there. And I, that's kind of the reaction I had when I read the audition um, scripts, the sides. I was like, this is this seems really out there. This seems like a really kind of strange and fun show, but I wasn't sure quite what to make of it. But then mm -hmm. kind of being in Spain and meeting everyone, it was like, all right, like this is going to be so much fun to make that there's really no choice but for it to turn out well. Because if you put a lot of heart into something, I think it's, it shows it shows in, in the in the end product. So that's that was pretty much shortly put. It was a lot of fun. Um, we partied a lot. Nice. We worked a lot. Um, we did some things that we've never done before. I've never thrown knives before, at least not in a non-angry situation. <laughs> not that I, not that I have thrown knives in an angry situation. I haven't. Um, but but yeah, there was like it, it was a lot of new experiences for all of us, and I think that was especially because it's such a show a show of such scale mm -hmm. that it was just it was just really cool to kind of learn a lot about other people's jobs, like what everybody's doing um, on set and. Yeah, that's that. Amazing, very cool. Is it true? Did I, I read somewhere? Is that is this your first on-screen role? Is that true? Yeah. Amazing. So, because yeah. I know you trained in, uh, I guess, in ballet and in theater, right? So you done yeah. like theater and stuff before that. Cool. Yeah. So, so how, did, I mean, how did you? F yeah. Go, yeah go no, ahead, no, go no, ahead. no. Finish your question. Oh yeah, one thing I say so. I love doing the show over Skype because we get to interview people in lo further distances. The thing I've never been crazy about, and Regine will agree, is there's this delay where like someone will talk and then there's like a, a second or two before. So anyway, yeah. people watching, if you see people going, oh, 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 sorry, you go, it's, that's because, yeah, exactly. Because Scott exactly. likes to just interrupt everyone. <laughs> that's just I'm very the rude. truth. <laughs> all in all, I'm, I'm, I'm just a very, very rude person and I just, yeah, there's actually no delay, everybody, no. Um, uh, <laughs> It's all a lie. Uh, what was? Yeah. It's all a lie. I was just going to ask. Um, uh, oh yeah, so we were talking about you were <laughs> you start you train in ballet and in theater, and I was just going to ask, you know, how how those skills translated for you to the screen and sort of the difference between say on stage and on screen. You can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, with a ballet, I think it was it was actually it was surprising because all through my training in um, in acting school, um, 
there was kind of this trend of me trying to find ways of like transposing those skills over to theater or to acting more generally. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you start you start learning how to do something. You're like, oh, okay, so these things like spatial awareness, just like knowing what image your body is putting out at all times. You're very conscious of like to the tips of your fingers what you're mm -hmm. doing. So it's it's and just it's like you're you're aware exactly the impression that you're giving. Um, and how a little movement or how the quality of a movement can change that impression um, and affect people differently. You know that certain like certain emotions come from certain parts, at least for me, certain emotions come from certain parts of my body. If I'm feeling very sad, you know, I feel it in a certain part of my body. If I'm happy, it it relates I relate to it differently physically. Mm -hmm. So just being really aware of all of that. Um, but it, it, furthermore into like, screen again it's the same it's the same principle of like you know exactly you know you, you know the camera is here you know what size the frame is you know what sh what like you know what the picture is actually but then it's about knowing how you relate to the rest of that picture to your mm -hmm. surroundings um and kind of being that that already being a little bit of a instinct because of so long kind of having to watch yourself in the mirror and know exactly what you're doing and like knowing exactly where the other people are so you don't, you never you're never too close or too far from someone um it just the dance really cultivates a kind of sixth sense spatially um which i think really helped both in theater and in screen um in terms of the difference between screen acting and theater acting I mean, people are always like, oh, you have to make your performance smaller, you have to do mm -hmm. this, you have to do that. It's like, yes, but no no, no smaller emotionally. It's just like, you, you know, you might not make that huge facial expression uh, <laughs> yeah. in a really close up shot, but it doesn't mean that the emotional input is any, any, any smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and you can still be very large on, on screen i think it just has to be motivated from the right place from the it has to have that that emotional outburst or whatever you're then physicalizing has to has to have that has to be filled with that energy if you do something for the sake of doing something it's not it's just going to look like you're kind of a puppet yeah. doing something yeah so yeah mm -hmm. makes sense yeah the uh i guess the if you if it's not rooted as in reality on on stage you might be able to get away with it because the people are a bit further away from you i guess but i guess if mm -hmm. the camera's right in your face real real emotions tend to read a lot more accurately right yeah if it's not in your eyes it it won't it yeah. won't read yeah makes sense um I, and i also imagine your uh your dance background probably helped a lot um with fight scenes and stuff yeah mm -hmm. what was it like making creating fight scenes on that show because there were a few oh yeah so yeah, I mean, it did really help because on one side, it's just like learning another piece of choreography. Um, but then like, like we did all the fight scenes, fight scenes that I do, I did pretty much learn them. Um, wow. But then it's like, but it so it was just like, so then we could use the stunt double, Helen, um, because she was just fantastic and she was so much better than me at it because that's her job. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, yeah, so we had the option of using both of us if we mm -hmm. needed to. Um, and in the in episode, I believe, 9 or 10, there is a little bit of a fight scene where you can actually see my face and it's like, it is me doing it because that is a bit that, you know, you can't really get away with using a double. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the there is a great fight scene in episode 4 where you cannot see my face at all, which is very convenient because then we could just let <laughs> Helen go and mm -hmm. do her thing, do her thing. and kick ass, <laughs> yeah. Not, I not even have to worry about me. I was just like, yeah, no, I could never, <laughs> I could never do it as well as her. So just, I'm just go do back. your thing, yeah. girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna sit. I'm just gonna go over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um. So, do you have now that you've done this on screen and stage? Do you ha do you find a preference between the two? Is there one that you like more? Are there are elements you like uh, more of one than the other, or what do you think? Well, I mean, at the moment, I re I'm really loving doing film. I really like the the process of it. I like the kind of the atmosphere of it. It's yeah, but I I mean, I was trained to do theater, so there's always that little bit of me that like 
I started acting because I liked theater. So I'll always have that love for theater. But it's it's at this moment, it's not something that I'm like drooling to do. <laughs> yeah. But it's also something that I would like to do more of in the future. So um, yeah, that's long answer short. I don't know what else to <laughs> say about that. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Um, I find, I mean, the, the cool thing about film is that it becomes, uh, I guess, th theater's right in the moment, right? And that's what makes it so special. But then there's a, something about film that once something is committed to film, it's like uh, immortalized forever, right? <laughs> immortalized. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, and there's something about, there's something great about the process of filming where you can actually, like, in theater, you have to practice beforehand, you, you rehearse beforehand. And that's how you work into getting the moments that you want to get out of the scenes. Mm -hmm. But in 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 a weird way, film is just as spontaneous as theater because you're working it in the moment there on set just before you just before you immortalize it. So there's a there's that weird duality where they're both very different in terms of process and how you get to the actual day of filming or the day of performing. But in another way, they're very, very similar. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, I'll try to get to some. Some people are asking questions. Um, are you a morning person? Do you consider yourself a morning person? Um, only in some cases. And this <laughs> is like, you, if I'm not doing anything, if I'm not, not doing anything special, if I'm kind of like in quarantine, like I am like, or self-isolating like I am now, I will sleep until 12, but <laughs> if I am exercising and I am being active and I can go places, I mm -hmm. will get up at like 6.30, 5 in the morning to go out like surfing or whatever, um, nice. because that's when the tide is um, at the best, usually in the morning and then late, later in the evening. Yeah. And another question that came up was, are you drinking tea or coffee? <laughs> coffee. There Always you go, people. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, oh, somebody asked you to say something in Finnish. <laughs> Would you like to say something in Finnish? Okay. Um, <laughs> no pressure. It's always that thing of like, what do you say? <laughs> when someone just like say something and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. put your mouth. <laughs> um, uh, kiitos kun kysyitte kysymyksiä uh, suomen kielestä. Uh, totta kai olisi kiva, että olisi vähän enemmän kysymyksiä suomeksi, mutta tota... Toivottavasti tulevaisuudessa tulisi ehkä vähän enemmän. Um, ja tota, kiitos kun katsoitte Warrior Nun Show ja, ja, ja että kun kuuntelette tätä podcastia nyt. Että, tota, tosi kiva, kiitos. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> there you go. There you go, people. That's just, just for there. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I think when we, when we first met, I think I mentioned to you that I went to Finland for a little bit. So I only learned yeah. how to say one. one yeah. I, I only learned how, to, learned how to say one word. I know how to say. Vatakarki. What does that mean? Which, marshmallow. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. It means marshmallow. <laughs> That's a good one, though. Yeah. They have some good marshmallows over there. Interesting. Yeah. Another question that came up since you are speaking in Finnish. They're asking what other languages do you speak? Um, I sp obviously, I st sometimes I speak a little bit of English. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too early in the morning, though. Um, <laughs> but I also speak French and I also speak some Russian. Oh, wow. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So how did you... So did you learn all those different languages in in school? Or, or how do you learn... Where do you... I guess... So... <laughs> why do you speak multiple languages? <laughs> <laughs> why, Christina? Why? <laughs> Um, no, so I, I was born in Finland, so I obviously learned that's my mother tongue. Um, mm -hmm. And at the, t I mean, I went to like a French Finnish kindergarten um, for a few years and then went to Finnish school, moved to America, moved to New York when I was six, um, learned English. Um, and then I went to a French, French American school for three years, oh, wow. um, in New York. Yeah. And then I went to Russia for th three or four years to study ballet. And so I learned oh, Russian wow. when I was over there nice. and, um, 
yeah, that's that's how that came to be. But fr it's weird because French and Russian are actually quite similar languages. They have a lot of borrowed words from each other. So now, because I haven't spoken either of them in such a long time, whenever something's like, say something in Russian, I'm like, is this French? Is this Russian? <laughs> X-Files theme plays in the background. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that there was uh, there were some uh, similarities uh, similarities between French and Russian. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, but uh, I guess they spent so much time at war with with each other historically that <laughs> they were bound to mm. mix and mess up some words as they were mixing and messing up the borders and all that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Bound to bound to transition over uh, back and forth. That makes sense. Um, yeah. In terms of your uh, going back to warrior nun. Your character of Sister Beatrice, she's, uh, well, as we're seeing from people in the chat, uh, she's, uh, she's become a, a fan favorite, so to speak. Um, how, uh, how similar do you think you are to, uh, to Sister Beatrice? Well, I mean, intellectually, I, like, I think we approach situations in a very similar way. Like, I think um, I can also be kind of very analytical and I can also be kind of stubborn uh, um, but and I can get kind of set in my ways but I think we are very similar in the sense that we can be all of that we can be analytical we can be kind of calm and and collected and sometimes even kind of distant like keep people at a distance a little bit but mm -hmm. I think we're both also very warm people and we do want to nurture other people's um, you know happiness and well-being and we don't want anybody to feel secluded or or kind of discouraged mm -hmm. um so if we see it like it, it's it's all about trying to make someone feel more comfortable and and accepted um but yeah i think i mean there are very like the, with every character you play and you'll probably know this as well scott like with every character you play it's gonna be it's a, it's gonna be similar to you in some way because it is you playing them so but i think like me personally i've i used to be a lot more like her when i was a bit younger um i was a lot more kind of solemn a lot more stoic and then i realized that i should just have more fun um <laughs> So <laughs> then I started making really bad jokes and bad puns, and I started just talking too much. And <laughs> now, I, now I can't turn it off. And that's okay. Uh, that's that's <laughs> where we are now. <laughs> um, is there any way that you can? Well, I mean, as, even as I ask the question, I can think of one really obvious one. But is there any way that um, you and Beatrice are like nothing alike? Like, can you think of something about her character that is was totally not you at all? She has this wonderful way of showing shade. Oh, hang on, wait, I can't hear you. Oh. Uh, Hello? Oh, wait, I think it's doing that delay. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, Con continue. Yeah, go, go ahead with your answer. Go oh, ahead with your answer. yeah, no, I think she has this wonderful way of throwing shade at other characters in a way that's kind. It's almost like you're saying something quite insult, like that could be taken in an insulting manner but she says it in a nice way so it isn't insulting at all and actually it's just trying it's like almost like giving constructive criticism but i can't i can't do that like either i will just not say anything or i will say something that's like not not acceptable in modern society to say to another person to their face um, but usually, usually I just won't say anything. Um, like if you don't have anything nice to say, don't don't say anything at all. Um, but yeah, no, she has this wonderful skill of of making very kind of harsh sounding words sound quite supportive, actually, or like constructive. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, yeah, that's that's something I think that we're quite dissimilar in. Is that what you're thinking of, Scott? Um, actually, well. As I was asking, my immediate thought was, well, she, like, you know, has, like, weapons and stuff. But I think your answer was much more... I think your your, your answer was much more interesting than mine. You don't know. Maybe Christina has weapons with her. I mean, hey. Yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just funny. It's like, as I'm asking the question, I'm like, is there a way she's different from you? And in my head, I'm like... the 
my it's like my answer is yelling back at myself like um well let's see she's like a warrior scott so uh <laughs> why are you you don't you don't know but scott i might think of myself as a warrior <laughs> I'm exactly kidding, I don't. That's true. <laughs> good there you go excellent excellent someone <laughs> says she's actually a ninja in real life see we never know oh oh no my secret's out oh no way to go scott <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news right here on the show. Um, you heard it here first. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, one thing, somebody's asking about um, how you got into um, dressmaking. And this is kind of related to what I wanted to ask you. But um, are yeah. you into dressmaking? I'm into clothes making. I actually nice. didn't get into specifically. Well, I was I did make a, a, I was into like historical dress for quite a while and I, I still am, but I then transitioned more into like menswear. I Ooh. have this love for like traditional um, tailoring, like menswear is nice. like tailor. Um, and yeah, but that's, but yes, yes, dressmaking. Um, I, well, I started off cosplaying around age 14. Um, I had, just come back from Russia and I was strapped for a hobby. <laughs> and um, I was like, this seems like fun. I saw some pictures online. I watched some, you know, anime. I watched some shows and I was like, yeah, this seems like there's a cool community around this, you know, fun people with a sense of humor. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I cobbled together my first cosplay and made some, did some arts and crafts and, and made some props. And that was kind of, I was like, oh my God, I can actually make things. This is cool. Um, and then I started, I taught myself to use a sewing machine um, and basically taught myself to sew. Um, so, so wow. therefore, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then that kind of just spiraled out of control um, into like historical fashion and making costumes in like three days before a con. And uh, yeah, just, uh, then I, I met some people who were also like into Shakespeare and into like classical literature and um, plays. And so we had like a Shakespeare um, cosplay group, which is like a really niche thing. Um, but like my friend wow. made, a, made a, a dress for Lady Macbeth and like, and it, these were all like original designs. So, wow. and I made, I made a costume um, based on like the psychology of Hamlet. <laughs> wow. I was, like, wow. That, I was like a very serious like 16 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, Sounds awesome. Do you, uh, so w were you one to like, you said three days before convention, so you, you would like go out to the conventions with that sort of a regular thing you like to do? Yes, yeah, so for like two years, I think. It was pretty much like uh, there was at least two or three conventions that I'd go to a year. Um, but yeah, no, that was that was a good time. And then, but then I started kind of thinking about where I want to go for university, and mm -hmm. I started being away for the summers because I was at, a, at like a Shakespeare summer course in London or something. So then those kind of slowly dropped off the map, dropped off the schedule. Um, but yeah. So that yeah, it was something that we'd like we'd we'd do the whole carpooling thing and get like a hotel room and squish nine people into it. <laughs> and I was always the one sleeping awesome. on the floor in front of oh. the bathroom, so people would always like walk over <laughs> trip <you>. over me. <laughs> <laughs> Have yeah. you been to any of the conventions here in Toronto? No, no, I haven't. I I only went around like in on the east coast, pretty much. Yeah. Awesome. And this was a few years ago. So you, have you been to any? Uh, I guess you probably haven't had time to go on any recently. I, I went to Dragon Con for the oh. first time a couple of years ago, and uh, that's in Atlanta, Georgia. But it's such an amazing atmosphere. Those like the, the costumes that people create are so like they 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 could take those costumes and like put them onto a film set and you they couldn't would just tell. Be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. It's it's and like it, the devotion that people have when they admire something and when it's when they're passionate about it it's it's pretty incredible and it's pretty incredible what you can kind of pull out of yourself like the skill set that mm -hmm. you can pull out of yourself when you really want to make something well and then you finish it and you're like i did not know that i could do that and that's i think the greatest thing about cosplaying as well is that you always surprise yourself with what you create it's 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 a confidence booster <laughs> 
And uh, one thing that's I just was, occurs to me is um, it's fairly likely. In fact, I would say it's 100% likely. Um, I guess, well, conventions are not happening now. But when the next conventions start to come, I think we might see some Sister Beatrice um, cosplayers. What do you think mm -hmm. of that? I hope so. I mean, the costumes are fucking amazing. Um, I don't know if I can curse on this show. Um, but yeah, no. I think, the, it's, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, the, the costume. <laughs> I love how I need to check. <laughs> um, no, the costumes are amazing. And like every one of them is subtly individual, like to, to each of us, um, which makes mm -hmm. it fun for a cosplayer because you can if they're all just the same it's not it's not as fun mm -hmm. um but yeah no i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to many many bow staffs at conventions and lots of shirk and please do not throw them around it is a crowded space that is a safety <laughs> hazard um mm -hmm. no i i on the first day of shooting we were shooting a fight scene and i had to throw one of the shuriken and uh, I hit the DOP as he was operating um, the camera. Oops. It like went boing, and it was a rubber one, so it was fine. But I was like, "Imagine if it was real." <laughs> yeah, this <is> DOP first <laughs> day of shooting. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a funny story. So, um, but yeah, no, it'll it'll be great. And if anybody needs insider knowledge on how the costumes were made, please send me a DM. Not all of you, but. <laughs> Not yeah. at the same time. You just, yeah. You just opened your DMs sure. to 300 But people. actually, no. Twitter, uh, tweet, tweet me. Because tweet you? at me on, on Twitter go. if you need um, advice making the costumes. Because I will be happy to help. Perfect. There you guys you heard it here. DM her or tweet her. Sorry. Yeah, well, I think probably tweet, 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 tweet at her is tweet, probably better. Tweet, tweet me. her. Yeah. yeah. Tweet me, yeah. Because yeah. I do read Twitter sometimes. Sweet. In fact, while we're talking about um, Twitter and, and stuff, so w how, what's it been like, you know, since the show has come out? You know, people are, are like I said earlier, is, Sister Beatrice has become a fan favorite. So how has it been um, sort of now that we've got this fan base of people? I, be, I believe they're calling themselves the cult. I think that's the what they're referring to themselves as, the cult. Um, how has it been? Well, I mean, uh, I, believe, I believe they call themselves the Halo Bearers. For the more Halo general, bears. yeah, the Halo Bears, yeah, I like that. <laughs> that sounds better than a cult. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 been incredible. Like I, it's like that thing where you don't know what to expect, so you don't have really any expectations. Um, so whatever you get is pretty great. Um, but this response, I did not expect at all. Um, I mean, I hoped, um, but I did not expect. Um, and it's been it's been wonderful to get p messages from people and to see you know people sharing their own stories um, of their own struggles with their faith or with their sexuality. Um, uh, yeah, it's it. I I didn't expect to kind of become this face of kind of this I don't know the spokesperson through this through this thing that people would look up to me. But that's that's it's great. I mean. I'm really honored and I'm humbled every time I go on the internet and I see people's comments and mm -hmm. like it just makes you so grateful to be a part of something like this and to yeah makes me happy to be alive um awesome. yeah no it, yeah it's really humbling and like I do my best to like interact with people uh when I can like I, I think I spent like six hours on on Wednesday just wow. like talking to people I was like oh no this is this is getting out of control you need to stop now <laughs> and then people are telling me to like go to sleep or drink water and I'm like oh my god you guys are so sweet please They're you go to sleep as you. well <laughs> yeah um but yeah the uh the halo yeah. bearers are very supportive or the cult I'm seeing some art there's some some there's people the, are saying yeah. we're the cult some people are saying we're the halo bearers it uh it's the it cult seems to of go halo ways. bearers there we there go there you go <laughs> There you go. But that's good. They've been very, very supportive. That's nice. Um, I did mm -hmm. see somebody ask, and um, do you? What, what? What's your uh, favorite? What's your favorite movie? Do you have a favorite movie? Um. Oh my God! Well, I just watched Suspiria, oh. and I was blown away. Um, but my favorite movie. My favorite movie. I really like Zorro, and I really like Orlando. 
um, which is, I believe, it was a movie made in the 80s. Um, but it's it has it's Tilda Swinton in the in the main part, and it's based on a novel by Virginia Woolf by the same name, Orlando. Um, I, that's a brilliant film, and everybody should watch it. It's beautiful, and the story is amazing. Um, it's something that you know. I, I don't think something quite like that has been made since. But it's it's just there's wonderful value in taking something like a novel like that um, that maybe hasn't had that much attention recently, and then making it into a film. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I believe uh, Warrior Nun was based on a a book, right? Was it a book? I think it, it was. was a comic series. Ah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, it was inspired cool. by a comic series of the same name. Yeah. But it's much more like it's not like an adaptation. It's much more like a takes inspiration from type of thing. Yeah. Makes sense. So you can't necessarily like go and read the series and sort of know exactly what's going to happen next because it's it's No. Yeah. So yeah, so like you you won't know what's hap- going to happen to the characters or anything because they, they it kind of it revolves around slightly different characters, um, but it's it takes place kind of in the same world, um, but the style is different and the story is slightly different. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Oh, Regine, it's uh, we should probably get, do the ads just because we're at well, we're past a half hour. Wow, this conversation's gone so by, <laughs> gone by <What>? so quickly, <laughs> gone so by, <laughs> gone yes, so exactly. by. <laughs> Sounds good. You know. I, 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 that's an expression. That's an expression. It's a commonly known expression. Mm. It's gone so by. Um, okay, let's do the ads quickly, and then and then and then we'll be back with more with Christina Tonteri yep. Young, um, ladies and gentlemen. This episode of the Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by the following fantastic advertisers. Mm-hmm. Um, Regine. Yes, Scott. Do you want to find out what your home is really worth? Maybe. Are you buying or selling a home? Depends on how much my home is worth. Well then, Jennifer C. Realtor at Home Life Culture Link is here to help. Mm -hmm. Call or text Jennifer today at 647-403-8887. Don't deal with just anyone. Speak to a professional. Jennifer C. at Home Life Culture Link. To see her current listings, visit homelifeculturelink.com. Mm-hmm. The Mortgage Godfather is here to give you advice with any mortgage needs you may have, and he will shop to find you the best mortgage. Nino Saimeka, mortgage agent. He'll give you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> He'll give you an offer you can't refuse, Regine. Michael, I never wanted this for you. Find out more at mortgagegodfather.ca or call 905-604-6955. And it was brought to you by Jewelry Forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom-made jewelry, repairs, and change watch batteries all done on site. And uh, we've got a fantastic uh, uh, deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? Yes, we do. If you guys go to Markville Shopping Center and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you, you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. 15%. One five percent off. And they have reopened with special uh, COVID safety measures in place. So you can head mm-hmm. on over to the, sh- to the store. 15% off your purchase. Find out more at Jewelry Forever. Dot C-A. And uh, if you would like to advertise on the show, it's very easy, isn't it, Regine? It's so simple, you guys. All you have to do is email us at Radio Show Ad. That's Radio Show Ad at gmail.com. That's right. And we do this show live every Sunday. So uh, it means that you can personalize the ads every Sunday. So if you have an event or some such thing going on that's happening in a re- specific time and place, you let us know. We let your potential clients know. And it's all done just like that. Get in touch. Radio show ad. Radio show ad at gmail.com. And we're back. We're back, ladies Woo. and gentlemen. We actually didn't leave. Actually, incredibly enough, <laughs> we actually didn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. That's the magic of, uh, of, uh, of the internet. Um, we're here with, of course... Uh, Christina Tonteri Young, 
Um, somebody I saw was asking in the uh, in the chat. Are you a uh, are you a fan of musicals? Do you have a favorite musical? Phantom of the Opera. Oh, Scott. hey, yeah, mine too. <laughs> no mine question. Too, yay. I was just watching the 25th anniversary from the Royal Albert Hall the other night because somebody yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. asked me this question on Twitter, and I was like, I have not thought about this for six months. How dare I not think about my favorite musical <laughs> for so long? Yes. I must watch it for 24 hours nonstop. Um, but yeah, uh, that. <laughs> and Scott did yes, the same thing. That makes thing. me so happy. <laughs> that makes me so happy because yeah, I was. So did you hear? Um, I, they were doing on YouTube. Uh, I think every week they might even still be doing it. But they were they were showing um, a different musical every week on mm. on YouTube for like forty eight hours. Did you hear yeah. about that? I did hear about that. Yeah. I didn't catch any of them. So they they did <laughs> Phantom. They had Phantom of the Opera for one. But yeah. in fact, here's a quick. I don't know if you knew this. Did you know that there's a sequel to Phantom of the Opera? Yes, Love Never Dies. Yes. <laughs> I um I just saw it. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Yeah, or I have, have you, seen it. Have you I seen have it seen at all? It. Yeah. I I saw it. So in that same YouTube thing where they were showing like a musical every week, that's when I saw it for the first time. What do you think of it? Do you like it? What do you think of it? I th I thought the music was still very good. I I don't know. Nothing can replace the original for me. So like, it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It it was like I appreciated it. Because I was like, oh, great, more Phantom, more Christine, more Raul. And there's a boy yes. now. There's a child. I was like, oh, my baby. But nothing will come close to the original ever. It's just not to be yeah. replaced. I agree. Yeah. I 100% <laughs> agree. Um, you know what's interesting, actually? If you had asked me, say, like a couple months ago, what my, what my favorite musical was, mm. I probably would have said... Um, Les Mis is my favorite and Phantom mm. is second but what I've realized as I've thought of it more and more is that even if there's part of me that thinks maybe Les Mis is like I think the greatest musical ever written I think in my mind anyway but I feel like the Phantom just f appeals to me just so much more and so Phantom is definitely my favorite musical yeah. I just yeah, I mean, I, I'm in the same situation. Like when I watched it the other day on YouTube, I was listening to the soundtrack constantly for maybe weeks after. Yeah. It was just all I, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's so what good. it's what I would always listen to when I was sewing, because I just put the soundtrack on a loop, so it would literally be just the Phantom of the Opera for days and days and days. And my parents are like, "Can you stop it with the Phantom? <laughs> we know it's the music of." The the night we don't care anymore <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, please. how do you do you have any opinions on the movie did you have you seen the movie with uh i have gerard, seen the movie gerard, Bull gerard the butler movie? i thought i mean from a costume perspective i thought i like i thought it was beautiful i thought it was beautifully made i thought all oh, like everything looked fantastic um i thought i yeah i thought it was a good film i mean yeah like i watched it way after it came out obviously um yeah me too yeah, yeah and by that time i'd seen um sierra and ramin saying the 25th anniversary and i was like nothing will ever come close to this so mm -hmm. tough tough luck for jarred but yeah <laughs> uh, ramin came first <laughs> yeah the vo yeah this thing the voice is in the in the movie are well the, the voices are good but yeah, yeah i mean no there's you know, they're... and i love that like Jared Butler really brought this more like rock feel like mm -hmm. it wasn't so much classical it was really like this rock sound as opposed to Emmy's Emmy Rossum's like quite this crystalline like young voice which is brilliant because Christine is supposed to be very young um, and sometimes in the musicals she sounds way too trained um, like it's because it is a trained singer and she has been working for God yeah. knows how many years before she gets that part and it is incredible to listen to but there's something about Emmy's performance because it is so pure and she was so young she was I think she was 17 um, that is so, just yeah she was really young yeah yeah so it still has that very kind of innocent sound um, and then this like that I think yeah Jared Butler did an amazing job with bringing more of that like really like strong like rock like rock and roll hard rock sound it was very yeah. deep and gutt guttural yeah it's good well, you know what the, the weird thing when i first saw i saw it way after it came out but i saw it i don't gerard butler was not 
like the super mega movie star Gerard Butler that he we know him as now when that came out. So when I first saw it, I don't even think I knew who he was. And it wasn't until years later when I went back and watched it, I was like, that's Gerard Butler. <laughs> I didn't even Is that realize. the guy from Love Actually or whatever? Yeah. 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 yeah he was, in, uh, was he in Love Actually? No, no, he wasn't in Love Actually. It was something he, else. He was, he was in that one where, it wasn't in that movie where they like switch was he in that movie where they switch houses? Yeah. What the, What was the name of that movie? I'm not good with movie names. <laughs> oh, but, never mind. But you know what I'm but talking yes, about, right? Yes, where somebody I goes to England one. or yeah. something? Yeah. Or I, or is it Ireland or Scotland? Yeah. Anyway. Europe. From my New knowledge. Of, <laughs> Anyways. Of, my knowledge of movies is dismal, <laughs> seeing that I am yeah. an actor. I should know more about them. But, um, well, but yeah. well, there you go. Anyway, that guy, that guy was the that phantom. That guy. Yes. Yes. There's a so, lot of uh, questions coming on here. All right. One of them is, all right, what well, is your um, fa- here's one. What is your favorite karaoke song? <laughs> Sorry, I just, it was um, the first thing that caught my eye. <laughs> my favorite karaoke song. Like your go to. Well, um, probably like. Some, something by Queen. I don't know. There you go. That's yeah. Good. Like a like a Bohemian Rhapsody Bohemian or Bohemian Rhapsody. Champions? Yes. If I yeah, feel like you and Scott are like Bohemian the same Rhapsody. Is... <laughs> yes. I I I've been doing. I mean, I don't do a whole lot of uh, of uh, of karaoke. Uh, although when I get out there, I I'll I'll go. You yeah, know? you do. Um, <laughs> and you yeah, actually yeah, see me. <laughs> <laughs> my, but my go-to is um, "Hungry Like the Wolf" by uh, Duran Duran. I oh, like that's that good. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a? Uh, do you have? Some people are asking. Do you have a favorite song or maybe a favorite artist or somebody you're listening to right now or? Um, I'm however you like to take to... one of those questions. I'm listening to LP right now. Actually, like her new song just came out mm-hmm. a few days ago. Um, but yeah, I really admire her like vocals like the the sound the quality of sound in her voice is incredible Mm -hmm. um and and vocal range is to die for (laughs) um but yeah so so lp um i listen to a lot of classical music so this is gonna like bore a ton of people but um i have like a weird obsession with franz list um i just yeah, like if you read his life story, if you read his biography as well, like it's it's he has a pretty interesting and kind of sad, um, like in a in a emotional and psychological way, kind of sad life life story. Like he became mm-hmm. very well known, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he was a happy person. Mm-hmm. But he has this incredible duality about him, where he's like, on one hand, he's this like ladies' man, and on the other hand, he's like incredibly. He's searching for like faith and searching for his kind of true self knowledge and and self acceptance, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. So there's like his father died at a very young when he was very young, and he kind of had to take over, um, earning money for the family, and as a kind of young prodigy, uh, um, at that time that was like literally young prodigies were popping up like daisies in the field um so so yeah it's a really interesting really interesting life story um but yeah um who else am i listening to right now i don't know i can actually look because i just listened to this song this morning and i thought this is really good um oh i was listening to b miller oh yeah okay yeah so I thought some of her songs were really interesting, but I do listen to more classical music. So it's just I I played the piano since I was like three uh, and oh, the nice. violin. So that I was kind of brought up on that, and that makes me feel the most comfortable. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Um, I and I guess you probably listen to like a lot of bard core as well. Probably lots of bard core. Lot <laughs> bard core. No, I mean like I don't I don't I really don't. I mean, if I want to listen to medieval music, I can go listen to medieval music. <laughs> like, I can, yeah, that's a there good is a point. great there is a great playlist on Spotify of just medieval lute music. Medieval music, which is oh. yeah. Whenever I need to sleep, it's medieval lute music. Um, put it on a timer. That's the 
yeah that's that's the shit right. that's where it's at <laughs> That's where it's at. Every time I every time I hear any of the bard core, any of that like, that that specific instrument, I always imagine. Um, have you seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Yes. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Yes. yes. So like you know the scene where they're like going through the woods and like they're kind of hopping this hop dancing when yeah I always imagine yeah. that and I and I, and and it makes me want to do that and sometimes sometimes I do in the in the condo. Um, Your neighbors are probably like, who's so, skipping <laughs> with the coconuts? They're like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my coconuts, and I'm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you? A lot of people are asking about it. Um, do you sing as well, or uh, are, are you? Yeah, do you do? I singing? dabble. I dabble in singing. Um, we did have singing classes in in university. So for three years, we I did take singing classes. Um, I don't by any means think of myself as a professional singer, um, but I, I, I can carry a tune, yes. They heard you in the beginning of the show. You sang along with Scott. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's out there now. <laughs> well, everyone's yeah. asking you to sing, so you guys already heard her sing. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. You missed the beginning of the yeah. show. You've lost, you've, you've lost there it There you go. <laughs> yep. Shit. Yeah, Mainly no, it would yeah. be uh, singing, singing the Phantom of the Opera soundtrack. That's probably the main. <laughs> you know, you, you, yeah, you're you're kind of joking, but it's a hundred percent true. This is that's yeah. where I've got all of my singing training is by just trying to sing the Phantom of the Opera. There like, you go. Or to cover, basically. Yeah. In sleep he sang to me. You know. In dreams he came. Yeah. There you go, Yay, guys. There you go. <laughs> there you guys. There they said to sing, and there you got it. Yeah, there there it not is. warmed yeah. up or anything. <laughs> and it yeah. sounded great. Yep. You know what I've thought? I've with the Phantom. I've thought about is I think it appeals to me because like the Phantom is kind of like this angsty teenager who like has his music and he just like wants people to like hear it. And I just feel like that there's that part of me that like. I don't know. Relates Connects to that? in that way. You're an angsty like, teenager. So... Well, I feel like I was. You know what I mean? Like, there's a part of me that's like, you guys just don't understand my music. You guys should just listen to my music. And I'm like, yeah, that's like. Anyway, <laughs> I... love me and appreciate me. Yeah. I'm a genius. Why can't you see this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I do understand see? that. I, I, and I, I and I understand Christine's kind of the dilemma that she has of of choosing between passion and logic. Um, so that's that's an internal question that I think everybody can relate to. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's always, uh, do, I, do, I, do I eat the chocolate cake because I'm passionate about it or should I eat the salad because I know it's the right thing to do? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. <laughs> Go marry Everything the phantom, goes, yes. Christine. <laughs> chocolate cake, chocolate <laughs> cake. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, in fact, that's one thing about about the sequel is like you see where the show ended up, and it's um, it's uh, I I don't know, am I happy with where they took the story? I, I'm I, I don't know. I was you, but I agree with you. I was happy just to see more of it. I yeah. just don't know if I loved. Yeah. Yeah, I was just happy Phantom to hear of the songs. opera. People are saying cake yeah. over salad, so I think they agree. Chocolate. Cake. Oh yeah, no, that wasn't that wasn't even that was a <laughs> question. Obviously, you go for the cake. Do you have a? Uh, <laughs> There's so many funny. going uh, on. Yeah, it's good. Um, I mentioned beforehand, but I've been asking every show. Do you have a favorite snack? Um, someone asked me this on Twitter on Wednesday, and I I was in a really oh, silly mood, and I replied, "The hearts of my enemies." Oh, oh delicious. <laughs> Oh. And everybody was like, "Whoa, shit!" No, because I was in a I was in a really silly mood. But no, um, a favorite snack. I don't know. I don't. I don't really snack a lot, but I like. I like Oreos. Mm -hmm. Question mark. I like Oreos. Because <laughs> is, is that the correct answer? <laughs> it's a good snack choice. Yeah. Like have an Oreo with some milk and that's it. You're set. Call it yeah. a day. Yeah. That's a good answer. I like that answer. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, um, I love snacking. 
but because I know that about myself, I try to not have any snacks here because I'm the type where, yeah, I'll be like, oh, I kind of feel like an Oreo. And then I'll just go and eat like the whole bag. All the Oreos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, when you have an Oreo, do you, did you say, do you dip it in milk? Or you, do you drink it with sometimes, milk? Sometimes. Sometimes I do. If I'm, if I'm committed to having more than one, mm-hmm. if I'm committed to having like three or more, I will get a little bit of milk and do the whole yeah. dippy doo da. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done? You know, they say the 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 classic way of eating the Oreos, where you're supposed to like split it, open it, yeah, and then like lick or whatever. Did you you I, ever you ever do any I, of that I, stuff? I, yeah, I sometimes do that, but not not so much anymore. Not because I've because I've started dipping them. I can't. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do the thing because it actually weakens the structural integrity of the cookie. Mm-hmm. to be only one <laughs> so when it's when it's the two are together it's a stronger cookie and therefore that's fair be a be a strong cookie <laughs> yeah yeah once it once the milk absorbs into the into the cookie part you, you can't it's really mush, you know. do the twist. It's just mush. <laughs> yeah yeah i find i find that the twist thing it, i often it, it'll just break like i i don't yeah. have a lot of success that sucks God. That. No, i'm kidding <laughs> so it's yeah. an acquired skill it's okay, I'll get yeah. there one day. I'm still working on it. Oh, uh, somebody's asking, did you have a favorite food while you were filming a Warrior Nun in Spain? I guess, yeah, I guess the food would be a, a different in Spain. Yes. Is there something that you... Yeah, that's a good yes. question. Um, hang on, who, who is it? Where'd he go? I haven't sent anybody else's name, but that's a good question. Princess Elijah, good question. Could, yeah, yeah go well, ahead. I mean... The seafood was obviously amazing. So, yeah, there was... The clams were good, fantastic. Mm. Um, but I especially like like the, the the Spanish comfort foods of like the mm-hmm. croquetas and the jamón, like stuff like that. Like the dried meats were amazing. So, and I I'm a sucker for dried meats. I love them. Um, so yeah, that's that. Nice. There you go. Very good. Uh, very good question. Um, some people are. I mean, I don't even know if probably what you can't say anything anyway but uh do you have any um i guess you probably wouldn't even know what's happening or if there are plans for season two but do you have any hopes for what you would want your character to do or go what where you'd like it to go without obviously i know you can't much with no spoilers (laughs) well i mean i don't even i don't know so there's nothing that i say that can be kind of used against me because i i I have no idea we haven't been told anything so well i mean i hope that we will get to explore the backstories of our characters of the of the sister warriors a little bit more um yeah i hope that we would get to see some of their backstory a little bit more and as like a character who's very put together through most of the first season she never really has that moment where she for maybe a scene in episode eight, but there, she never really has that moment where she's really thrown off balance. Mm-hmm. Um, probably because we see Ava doing that, like having herself thrown off balance for most of the first season. Um, but it would be really interesting as a character who's very kind of stoic and very um, grounded to see her kind of being, seeing that balance get upset by something. Yeah. Awesome. But I mean, uh, at the end of, the end of season one kind of takes care of its that for itself because the end of season one is pretty epic and there's quite a few surprises there so so it uh it gives all of our characters something to be upset about i think for season two there you go there you go um yeah. oh another question um ria elaine malabuyok asks did you have a favorite location while you were shooting warrior nun did you have a favorite spot that you were in. It looked beautiful. I mean, so many of the places look so nice. Did you have a favorite? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, just like flicking through my binder of memories. You, you um, probably had a lot, well, of, I, lot of things to choose from, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally didn't film anything in this location, but I went because I wanted to go to see it. Um, I loved Rhonda one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. Um, but also, I mean, just being in Antequera was amazing. Just like, yeah, 
the the old the old church and and kind of the battlements around the church yeah that was pretty incredible yeah wonderful um that's uh that's wow we've been going for over over an hour Isn't over an hour yeah yeah <laughs> That's uh, that's that's good. The the the, 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 the conversation's yeah. been flying along. Um, we, yeah. we, I wanted to ask. Um, I guess. I mean, I don't know if we're wrapping up. We might wrap up soon, but but I did want to ask you. Um, so what's next? What's next for for you? What uh, what what things are coming down the pipeline, as the world slowly starts to reopen again? I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did a few projects after warrior nine like immediately after um one of them is a netflix film called outside the wire um Ooh. yeah um and they are expecting it to be released in january i believe i think things have been slightly delayed because of mm -hmm. obvious reasons um and then i did another film in london called a gift from bob which is a sequel to a film that came out in 2017 called a street cat named bob um which is it's a christmas film so it's a very like feel good Aww. happy happy kind of family oh film. bob <laughs> yeah um and i was sorry to hear actually when i went to do adr that bob the cat the real cat has passed away Aww. um Aww. unfortunately so it will be in memoriam to him mm. um F's but in yeah the chat and for then bob, everybody f's in the chat for yeah. bob respect um, and then, I mean, I'm still working on this film, um, The Swan, so that that will be, we will be done filming, I believe, on the 19th of August, so then from there, I, I don't know when they plan to release it, but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of, that's it for now. You have a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Have you, um, yeah. have you been on any, uh, sets sort of post quarantine yet or has uh, have you uh yeah have, have you been on any where they've got the restrictions in place and stuff yet or not yet no so we i believe we'll start filming again on the swan on the 5th of august mm -hmm. and that will be with all of the restrictions and everything in place mm -hmm. and um yeah it's gonna be a very steep learning curve i like i was reading the quarantine guidelines for for filming and i was like well this this eliminates all of the nice things about being on set which is like yeah. talking to people and like going around and talking to different people and mm -hmm. you know having the hair and makeup people and costume come up to you and just so yeah it'll be it'll be interesting it'll be co completely different um setup yeah, I was actually I was actually on a set this week um, again for first time with COVID just for a commercial and uh, yeah I mean the the big change is the obviously everybody's masked everywhere you go but it yeah. still it still feels good it's just everybody is obviously keeping distance from each other and obviously the the food is different like you can't just go up to the buff yeah and like give it in a box <laughs> yeah yeah that was my big. Because like I, I, the food is some of my favorite parts. Because I can just <laughs> of course it would. eat <laughs> eat as <laughs> much as you can. On... <laughs> yes, because you also also find like they'll put there's always like a nice big cake or a pie at the end of the table, mm -hmm. and like there's usually like for for whatever reason like not a lot of people go after the cake, so I can just grab a giant piece. <laughs> so, so that's um, yeah, that's different. Unfortunate. But, uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> cake before salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always. In fact, K, okay, maybe I should. Anyway, it doesn't you can matter. Order a I cake? was just thinking. When you... <laughs> no, I was just thinking it would have been. I would have been smart if, like, when if you're on set to just start at the dessert end of the table and work backwards. I don't know why I didn't think of that until now. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely, I definitely, but... like, when we when we were filming this one in like February, March, I definitely there was times when I went for the cookies or the cake first yeah because yes. i was like i'm not taking any chances with this i deserve my cookie <laughs> <laughs> exactly i earned yeah. it i earned that i've earned it i've worked um, hard for it <laughs> <laughs> but anyway now we don't have to worry about that because the uh, yeah the food is going to be in a box it's, it's going to be rationed yeah um halix bearer asks if you well that's an interesting question if you weren't an actor, what mm -hmm. career choice do you think you would be, uh, what, what would you be pursuing or what would you be? 
Um, I mean, yeah, I, w I would probably be working in, like, travel photography, travel, oh, like, wow. travel journalism, um, but also, like, through that, I would like to be doing, like, humanitarian work, like, even, like, jur journalism in, in a broader sense, um, so, like, yeah, probably something like that, cool. something that would allow me to travel a lot and still, you know, help people and have other people's interests at heart cool awesome do you um i guess is, is photography an interest of yours do you uh do you i love i love photography i don't think i'm very good at it um but i do i i did i do have a camera which is woefully underused um but yeah no i would i would like to get better at it yeah nice awesome yeah well, there's a apparent, there's a lot of love for you from oh. Latin America oh. and Mexico. They're saying Cancun, Mexico loves you. Oh, I and love then, Cancun. I've been there before. There I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, they're saying Latin America loves you, and then of oh. course people are also replying Philippines loves you. Oh, how has it been? Like you mentioned, you go live on your Twitter every Wednesday. So is it does it get overwhelming with all of the response, or are you used to it now? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, la last this this past Wednesday, I had I had learned from the first time and I, I went on a bit early because I knew that questions would start coming a bit early. But it is like I, we can't answer every question, unfortunately, but it's not been overwhelming in the sense that it's unmanageable at all. Oh. It's been lovely, um, if anything, but it's yeah, it, it is it is a very kind of different feeling from going going from someone who kind of just expects to be huddled over in this corner doing my little thing to then suddenly <laughs> like oh okay so I, I like need to interact with people which is like I mean it's so much fun and especially at this time when when you know you haven't seen your friends for ages and you haven't really talked to anyone properly mm -hmm. for a long time um outside of your immediate family it's yeah. really lovely to kind of have that perspective of having people around the world um mm -hmm. be, like saying hello and all that yeah that's awesome. Is there anything you want to say to the people that are currently watching? I know there are some saying that they have to go because it's late in the Philippines or it's in different parts of the world. Go to sleep if you need to. <laughs> do not, please do not stay up too late on my account. I could not have that on my conscience. I treasure sleep. Um, but thank you for staying awake. I really appreciate it. Um, and, and we will see you on Wednesday again uh, for to answer all your questions on Twitter or as many as we can. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for being so supportive and for, you know, being in love with the show and with Beatrice and for, you know, yeah, supporting a bunch of really badass women um, doing really badass things, which is what we need in this time. Mm -hmm. Not only not not only to fight mythical creatures, mythical monsters, but to fight the real ones in real life as well. So thank you for being a part of that. Yeah. There you go, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> this is this has been a this has been a really really wonderful episode. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I really it's enjoyed it. It's, yeah, glad. Yeah, me me me, me too. I I glad that you love the Phantom. That makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, forever. It was the first musical I saw, and it will be the last musical I ever see in my life. On my deathbed, I was like, oh. turn the Phantom on. There you go. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> this is the music that I um, want to go out with. Like, as the darkness yeah. overtakes me, I'm like, yes, the music <laughs> of the night, finally. <laughs> Ooh, it's over now. The yeah, that'd be so yeah. good. I like it. I the like patients it. in the next hospital bed in the nursing home are like, <laughs> what? what's going <laughs> on? <laughs> Who is this person? <laughs> Turn that off. <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> We're trying to sleep up a little. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Middle of the night. <laughs> Perfect ha ha hospital atmosphere. Um, I guess we should, uh, I guess we'll wrap, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap things up. Um, uh, Christina, I guess, where can people uh, find you on social media, all that stuff? Where can they, where can they follow your, your dramatic journey? My dramatic journey, my very undramatic journey. Um, <laughs> So Instagram, obviously, um, I'm under the name Christina underscore Tonteri Young. And uh, I believe that's my Instagram name. 
don't even anymore. Um, and on Twitter, I I'm at Tom Terry anyway. Young. Yeah, and um, Twitter cool. is at Tom Terry Young. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Regine, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter under It's Regina Lena. Or if you'd like to follow my pageant journey, um, you can follow my Facebook and Instagram at MS, so Ms. Galaxy Canada. And since you guys are already on YouTube, you might as well come and subscribe to me. Scott has put a link in the description below. I will be having a video coming out later today, so please stay tuned for that. Where can they find you, Scott? You can find me right here where you're watching this video. Video. I am Scott Dion Brown, youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. You can find me on Twitch and DLive as well. And if you want, you can follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter as well. All under Scott Dion Brown. And uh, we have a lot of fun on this here channel. And uh, have a wonderful, have a wonderful time. And uh, yeah, any, any final words? Anybody got any final uh, thoughts, any final words to say to these people here tonight? No, I mean, today. yeah, just uh, just thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I've had a ton of fun. So, I mean, yeah, anytime I can have a bit of fun, I'm in for it. So, yeah, go to sleep, drink water, um, eat. And cake over yeah. salad. Cake over <laughs> salad. Yes. Cake over salad, people. Absolutely. And um, yes, yeah. please stay safe out there in this crazy world. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, you could have... You could have gone anywhere. Well, no, actually, we can't really go anywhere. But <laughs> I, I took a taken... run around the block. I don't know about you. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I do that. I, I take the daily walk around, but usually not before the show. I, I crawl out of bed and just drag myself from the bed to this chair and hit this. You do know. you, but I will, do you keep the chair? Later. Scott, I have a question. Do you keep your chair by your bed? Do you just roll out of bed and slide to your computer desk? I do. Actually, what I do is I have the chair recline. I just stay in the chair. I basically never leave this oh. chair. And I oh. just like roll over like this. And I just like, hi, welcome to the show. And then I'll just roll back <laughs> over. <laughs> I haven't left this chair. In, I haven't left this chair in four months. Oh, God. Um, Unless but anyway, for a so. It's been 84 years. <laughs> 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 exactly. No, I, when I said I take a walk around the uh, block, it's just in my in my office chair. I just push. Oh, myself. you get yeah. pushed around. <laughs> I do. No, I push myself. I just you know, oh. I'm reclined. Anyways, point as I was saying, <laughs> you can't really go anywhere where there's large groups of people. No. But here on the internet, you could have gone anywhere. You could have clicked on any link. You could have you could have been playing a video game or watching you know the Phantom of the Opera. You could have been there. Or surfing in Bali. Or surfing in Bali. You could have been. <laughs> you could have been doing any of these things. But instead, you chose to spend your Sunday with us here today. And uh, mm -hmm. for that, ladies and gentlemen, we are eternally grateful. And um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, please smash that like button if you haven't yet. Here I am saying at the end of the show. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And um, Christina, thank you so much for being here. No, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. All the best to you and uh, Regine. See you later. See ya. See you guys next see week. Ya. And like Scott mentioned, stay safe because you can't pass on your germs. Goodbye. Okay, That's right. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.